Good morning, Dr. Kim. My name is Eleanor Lee, and it's such an honor to be able to interview today about a day in life um, as an IRS specialist at University of Cincinnati. Um, can you tell us about yourself and your current position and your training experience to start us off? Yeah, Eleanor, thank you so much for inviting me here to talk about interventional radiology, also known as IR. Um, in my opinion, IR is one of the most exciting subspecialties in medicine. It is really great to meet medical students like yourself who are enthusiastic and already exploring IR. Um, and it's also nice to meet everyone online. My name is Stephanie Kim. I'm an inter academic interventional radiologist at the University of Cincinnati, like Eleanor mentioned. Um, my main interests are medical education, and I'm currently the director of IR Medical Student Clerkship, as well as the associate program director for the independent IR residency. In terms of my training pathway, um, you know, I started my journey to IR as a medical student at the University of Chicago Pritzker School of Medicine. I've always been a really hands-on and visual learner, so naturally I gravitated towards um, surgical and procedural subspecialties. Um, when it comes to IR, I actually had never even heard of interventional radiology until late in my third year of medical school. During a vascular surgery rotation, I experienced the IR angio suite for the first time. And seeing that imaging technology used to perform really complex minimally invasive procedures was really amazing, if, if not futuristic even. Um, so after med school, I stayed at UChicago for a preliminary intern year in medicine. I went on to complete my diagnostic radiology and interventional radiology training at the Hospital of the University of Pennsylvania. Um, as I'm hoping to talk about later today, there are different pathways to becoming an interventional radiologist. Um, my particular pathway started as a diagnostic radiology resident at Penn. During residency, I participated in the Early Specialization in Interventional Radiology Program, also known as ESIR. Um, afterwards, um, I completed a one-year independent IR residency, and that, was, that brings me till today. I'm really grateful for both my diagnostic radiology and interventional radiology experiences at Penn as they really laid the foundation for my career in IR. Thank you so much, Dr. Kim, for already touching up the next question that I wanted to ask. Can you tell us more about the different training pathway in IR, please? Definitely. Uh, as IR has continued to evolve over time, um, it's become increasingly sophisticated and essential um, as a subspecialty in medicine. In recent years, there have been changes in the training pathway to becoming an interventional radiologist. Historically, to become an IR, you would graduate from a diagnostic radiology residency, then do one year of IR fellowship. And essentially, this pathway is now phased out. We are no longer referring to IR training as a, a fellowship, but rather as a residency. Um, to summarize, currently there are three different pathways that you can go through to complete a residency in IR. I think before we even start, I think it's really important to remember that every pathway gives you the training you need to become an interventional radiologist. There are some differences when it comes to timing and structure, but the overall training you'll receive is quite similar. Uh, the total training time is roughly six to seven years. To start, all radiology residents complete a year of internship. That could be medicine, surgery, or transitional. I believe a lot of IRs are now recommending a surgical intern year, which, which makes sense given the procedural nature of our subspecialty. Um, however, as I mentioned earlier, I did my medical intern year in medicine. Um, the time I spent in medical ICUs definitely impacted how I manage critically ill patients that come to IR today. So ultimately, I believe the value of your intern year really is program-based and also what you make of it. When it comes to radiology residency, there are um, two major options. Option one is matching into a traditional diagnostic radiology residency and follow, following it with a separate IR residency. Option two, um, the newer option, is matching into a combined interventional radiology and diagnostic radiology residency. This is what we now refer to as the IRDR residency. So let's talk about that first. The combined IRDR residency is a great option for those who know they are headed to IR. While the first few years are essentially similar to diagnostic radiology residency, there are added benefits. For example, um, as a resident, you're gonna be brought into the fold with IR attendings and IR residents earlier on and receive that mentoring. 
you'll also not have to go through a second application process in order to become an IR. Um, however, currently there are fewer spots in IRDR programs relative to diagnostic residency spots, so it can be more competitive to match. Um, the diagnostic radiology residency is also a successful route to becoming an IR. After diagnostic residency, you apply for a separate second residency in IR training, which lasts only one to two years. If you think there's a strong possibility that you're going to want to go this route um, for medical students, I would recommend applying to diagnostic radiology residency programs that offer something called ESIR, which we touched on earlier. That's the early specialization in interventional radiology. There may be a limited number of ESIR spots in each program. So when you interview, definitely ask each program how many ESIR spots they offer each year. Um, there's a real benefit to completing ESIR um, because it shortens your, the length of your IR training. If you are at ESIR, you only need to complete one year. If you do not do ESIR, that's fine, but you will have to complete two years of additional training at IR. So in summary, there are three different pathways to becoming an IR. If you would like more information, I would highly recommend checking out the Society of Interventional Radiology's webpage. I believe it's called Residency Training and Pathways, and it really goes over each pathway in detail. Thank you so much. That was really, really helpful um, for those of people out there who are interested in IR but don't know what are some of the pathway offered to become one when they graduate. And I also kind of want to touch on another question that was frequently asked. So why is why are why is the DR training so important as part of the IR pathway? Um I am really glad we're talking about this. A strong foundation in diagnostic radiology is essential for a career in interventional radiology. In fact, our understanding and expertise of diagnostic radiology is really what sets us as IRs apart from surgeons and other proceduralists. Um, don't know how to say this better, but interventional radiologists utilize diagnostic radiology knowledge every single day. Um, this includes your pre-procedural workups, your intra-procedural imaging, and as well as some diagnostic imaging interpretation you might be doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, we'll go into detail a little bit about each one. With regards to your pre-procedural workups, as an interventional radiologist, you have to evaluate imaging prior to approving and performing a procedure, obviously. Um, you may even need to interpret that imaging before a final diagnostic radiology read has come out. Um, an example is during an active trauma bleed, you may be sitting at the CT scanner, interpreting the images for a bleed so that you can immediately decide whether that patient can be directly transferred to IR. Um, once you get in the procedure, with regards to intra-procedural um, um, skill, our extensive knowledge of imaging is really what allows us to make split-second decisions in real time. After all, um, I like to say, what is IR? But real-time imaging interpretation. Um, and for example, uh, having read thousands of diagnostic radiology radiographs is what allows us to place central lines accurately, despite difference in rotation and atomic variation and all sorts of other things. Um, having read hundreds of CTs as a resident allows you to identify and, and, and both safe and potentially dangerous routes when you're sending a needle really deep into the human body uh, for biopsy, for drain, for a lot of other reasons. And so this foundation in diagnostic radiology is what really allows IRs to be excellent minimally invasive proceduralists um, and really also treat patients from head to toe. And then finally, it's worth mentioning um, that there are a wide variety of careers in interventional radiology. Um, knowing diagnostic imaging is important because many careers have a diagnostic imaging component. Um, many of us will be reading CT and geography scans in between procedures. Um, some will even be reading other kinds of diagnostic imaging. This is yet another reason why it's so essential for IR residents to embrace their diagnostic radiology training. That's really helpful, um, Dr. King. Then to segue into that, can you talk a little bit more about what are some of the procedures that University of Cincinnati perform um, at your program and what is unique about the program at University of Cincinnati? Oh, definitely. Um, University of Cincinnati um, Medical Center is an urban academic medical center. It has level one trauma and an active transplant organ service. As interventional radiologists, we are 
um, active in the treatment of both these patient populations. We're also a member of the pulmonary embolism, pulmonary, eh, pulmonary embolism response team, also known as PERT. Um, we are a referral center for a lot of medical diseases. We have an active interventional oncology and hepatobiliary service. Um, we frequently collaborate with other specialties in our hospital to provide the best possible care for each patient. Um, we have active services with regards to women's health, men's health. This includes procedures such as uterine artery embolization, prostate artery embolization, and others. Um, here we share procedural suites with neurointerventional radiology, so our residents can easily rotate them with them um, as well while they're on service with us. And then finally, our independent residents have the opportunity to rotate with our vascular surgery colleagues to experience some peripheral arterial disease work. With regards to training, um, in my humble opinion, I think University of Cincinnati is a great place to train from both a diagnostic radiology and interventional radiology standpoint. With regards to IR specifically, because that's what we're here today for, we offer ESIR. We have an independent IR residency. And in the very near future, we're hoping to matriculate into IRDR as well. Um, I think um, the best part of University of Cincinnati is that we have a very, very resident-driven program. Every radiology resident gets great hands-on training here. From day one, as, your, as a first-year resident, you're working at consults, you are performing as a first assist with your attending in the case, and these cases can be anything from biopsies to complex vascular cases. And I'm really proud to say our residents do a fantastic job. What I also love about our program is that we have, uh, we put a lot of value on teamwork and vertical integration. The residents, medical students, and APPs all sit together in the same room. It's centrally located within IR. It makes for a really collaborative environment when it comes to working up consults, dividing cases, and, and honestly learning from one another. I think as we touched on already, I think the major, um, as a major academic center in Cincinnati, we offer a wide breadth of cases. This is also a strength. Um, and as a result, our residents, again, diagnostic residents and IR residents experience a wide breadth of cases from trauma, transplant, PE, and oncology. Um, and uh, I forgot to mention our residents also can rotate at Cincinnati Children's Hospital, which is one of the premier children's hospitals in the U.S. Um, and obviously they have IR as well. Um, I think this broad exposure is a great foundation to any radiology and IR career. Thank you so much for sharing, Dr. Kim. And last but not least, let's wrap up this interview with a little more detail about yourself. So what is your specialty procedure? Um, do you do anything um, on frequently on a daily basis? Um, I think one of the unique aspects of being an interventional radiologist is that you have the skill set to specialize and treat diseases in many different areas of the body. You can sometimes have multiple specialties in multiple different areas. Um, one of the things that I do that I'm really passionate about is women's health interventions. This includes minimally invasive procedures like uterine artery embolization and embolization for pelvic venous disease, also known as pelvic congestion syndrome. In the right patient, these procedures can significantly improve a woman's quality of life and prevent them from having to undergo a major surgery, such as a hysterectomy. Um, I really love working with this patient population. They're usually women in their 30s to 50s, um, and it is so meaningful to get to know each woman and her story. Um, of course, in addition, there's a lot of other cases I enjoy on any given day, including venous access, um, dialysis interventions, and trauma. This is really one of the best parts of being an IR. We do such a wide variety of cases, and every day is just so different. Um, so hopefully all of this kind of has given you a taste of what we do in IR and the training pathways you can take. Um, I would say that if IR is something you're interested in or our viewers are interested in, I would highly recommend learning more. Um, you're already here, which is a great place to start. Um, the best place to start is the Society of Interventional Radiology resident, fellow, and student section. Um, participate in your local radiologist interest groups and meetings. And of course, shadowing is always the best jump off point to meeting residents and attendings in the future.